yesterday we had been speaking about how shaitan had planned with Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, the first of mankind, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him. Today we'd like to continue from where we left off. And I'd like to make mention of a few points that we did not mention yesterday. To begin with, how did the angels know that this man who's going to come onto the earth is going to be corrupt and is going to spill blood? How did they know that? They said it immediately. So there are two explanations to it. The first one is because of the previous experience with what we've learned was the bin kind who were on the earth. So because those who were on the earth before, that is what they did. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he decided to create insan, automatically they understood that if this insan is going to go as a khalifa onto the earth, then they will also engage in something similar. That is number one. Number two, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the dust from the earth, they knew that this insan is going to go onto the earth. And if he's a khalifa going to come one after the other, he will want as much as possible for himself during that lifespan and he will become selfish and he will, it will then result in each one becoming jealous of what the other one has. And we will see that when we get to the story of the children of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, that is where it all started. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a deeper understanding. We need to know that we should defy that Iblis, that Satan, that devil who promised Allah that we would actually follow him and not Allah. We are following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not Iblis. And something very interesting, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so great that if a person has to follow Iblis for 70 years or for a long period of time, if for one second they have to then turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything is wiped out. Every drop of evil is wiped out and they start with a new leaf. So to turn a new page is not difficult for mankind. But we need to turn the page. Subhanallah. When you're reading a book and you've got to the end of it, you want to know what's on the next page. If you're not going to take your finger and try and turn the page, how is it going to turn? So the same applies and effort is required to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. Another point we need to know is yesterday we made mention of the size of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and we said the minimum was that he was 18 meters tall. Imagine what is 18 meters. Very, very tall. MashaAllah. Now that is the original height of man and we've become shorter. Unlike what the theory of evolution suggests that man was short and now they're becoming taller. I do know that nowadays because of all the fertilizer in the shoes of the youngsters, they're becoming taller than us, mashallah. Or should I say all the genetically modified foods and so on. But that does not mean that they are as tall as those before them. We know of the previous nations who used to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they used to carve the mountains to live in the mountains. Imagine what must have happened at the time, how big they must have been. So we are minute compared to them. Not only that, they had an average lifespan of 1000 years and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, A'maru ummati ma bayna sittina ila sab'een. The lifespan of the members of my ummah is between 60 and 70 years. I always like to say, if a person has clocked 70, they're actually now in extra time. Allahu Akbar. It is a gift of Allah. They can now prepare even better to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah have mercy on all of us. Remember, no matter how long you live, you have to go. No matter how long you live, you have to go. There is no ways you are not going to go. So the best, the best bet, if you were to take a bet, is to prepare for when you are going. Some people don't want to understand that which is so simple. There are still people who say, no, let me enjoy. Well, if you go whilst you're enjoying, there will be no enjoyment thereafter. So the best bet is to work hard. It's like a person saying, let me not study for the exams. And then you have the examination. Who was foolish? It is you to blame. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. So when we are going to be resurrected on the day of Qiyamah, we will all be the height of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Every one of us will be 18 meters tall. Imagine. 
every one of us will be 18 meters tall. Very interestingly, the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam makes mention of when the trumpet will be blown, everything will come to an end, everything will be destroyed, and thereafter there will be a rain, a thick white rain that will fall on the earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause with that rain the humankind to grow just like trees grow just like trees grow humankind will grow into what is known as the mahshar or onto the plains of the mahshar where allah wants to resurrect us we don't know exactly where we've just been given a slight description but wherever allah has chosen for that land of mahshar we will all be resurrected and we will grow like trees that is a hadith of abu huraira radiallahu anhu and it is mentioned very clearly and do you want to know every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the reign of mercy in the Quran he always makes mention of the fact that this is how we will be resurrected when the reign of mercy falls down on the earth the dead earth which was brown suddenly becomes green and it grows things grow and Allah says in another place he says in that way you shall be resurrected in the same way we will take out the dead Allahu Akbar so every time you see the rain and you see something grow you should think of resurrection how we will also be resurrected and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we were taught through the lips of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we will be growing to 18 meters and we will be growing to a certain age. What is that age? 33 years of age. So 18 meters and the peak of your age is 33. You will be at the age of 33 on condition that you died after puberty. Those who died prior to puberty and they were children, their condition is different. They will be waiting for their parents and they will be interceding on behalf of their parents by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if Allah wills and permits. But they will be waiting. And this is why we say, those who have lost their children either through stillbirth or through miscarriage or in infancy those children by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be waiting in the akhirah and they will plead with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya Allah you did not give my mother the time to have me and to probably play with me and so on so Ya Allah I want my mother to come with me into Jannah my parents should come with me into Jannah so this is the pleading of the little child and if this mother happened to be from amongst those who tried to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the parents bore patience for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they suffered the loss by the will of Allah that will be a means of their entry into Jannah it will be a means of their entry into Jannah so this is a point of comfort so we need to know everyone will be at the age of 33 and they will be 18 meters tall and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will begin taking hisab or the reckoning will commence. May Allah make that day easy for us all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter makes mention of the day. The day which Adam alayhi salatu was salam was created. It is also a narration in Sahih Muslim. Again by Abu Huraira radiallahu an, Where he says Friday is the best day that the sun has risen upon why it is the day that adam was created so that was from the lips of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told us it is the day that adam was created and it is the day that he was granted entry into paradise what does that mean from that hadith we understand that he was created there is difference of opinion where exactly he was created was he already created in paradise or in another place in a place that allah knows so from this narration, it seems like he was created and then he was put into paradise from this narration because it says Fihi udkhil al -jannah. on that day he was granted entry into Jannah minha wala illa fi yawm al The hadith continues to say and the day of resurrection will not happen except on a Friday. So it is the most powerful of the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now on a Friday, what time of the day was Adam alayhi salam created? Very interesting. One of the correct narrations makes mention of the fact that he was created in the last hour of the Friday, which would mean between Asr and Maghrib. So this is why you know that there is an hour in or on a Friday when any dua that is made is accepted. 
that is a correct narration, authentic, that there is one hour, sometime during the day on a Friday, when if you are making a dua at that moment, then it will definitely be accepted. So what is your bet? We don't know the exact hour and we don't know what it is. Some say it is when the Imam goes up. Some say it is between the sitting of the Imam and some say it is this time and that time and so on. Your best bet, repeat the dua the whole day on a Friday. Allahu Akbar. Just repeat the dua. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. We normally try to think of something logical and this makes the most sense. So when it comes to the creation of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, we see it was in the last hour. And this is why we are taught to make dua also at that particular time on a Friday. And it's very interesting that this is mentioned in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Yesterday we spoke about how Hawa was created from the rib of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. There is a narration that makes mention of what happened. When she was created, yes, she came in as a gift. He was very happy. He asked her, who are you? Question, who are you? She says, I am a woman. You are a woman? Subhanallah. I am created as a pair for you. Yes, he was very lonely. So now he was happy. He says, Lima khuliqti. Why were you created? She says, Li askuna ilayk. For me to give you comfort company solace subhanallah now this is what is meant to be achieved by marriage up to today when you marry what you meant to be getting from marriage is comfort it is company companionship someone whom you can spend the rest of your life with mashallah in harmony in peace who will bring you lots of goodness but what happens nowadays they tell you this is not the same man i knew when i was dating him that's what he said. When I was dating him, he was such a lacquer guy. Yes, this is what people say. No, do you know what was happening? When we were dating, shaitan was beautifying. Now that we're married, shaitan goes away. Then he comes back with a new task the same evening, how to separate the two. He was achieving by making us commit sin before marriage. And thereafter, when we got married, he now is trying to achieve by making us fight. This is why when we follow what Allah says, we won't go wrong. If you have married based on proper character and conduct and deen and so on, that will remain intact and we will be able to recognize how shaitan is coming into our lives. I normally tell people on campus with all due respect to those at varsity, do you go to the university to get married? They say, no, we went to study. So when you went to study, what happened? You came back married, mashallah. If you come back married, it can work. Alhamdulillah, if you know how to do it, and if you know how, for example, to choose a spouse. But sometimes the environment on campus, and we need to know this, is common for all. So for that reason, we see someone on campus in that environment. We get on with them because there's so much in common. The minute we take them home after marriage, it's a totally different environment. She doesn't like it there and we don't like it in her environment. It no longer works. Had you remained on campus all your life, your marriage would have blossomed. You'd probably have children who were professors as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and understanding. This is obviously just a point to try and make mention of how important it is to choose a spouse correctly, whether, wherever it is. We're not trying to say this is wrong or that's wrong. If we do it the wrong way, it's wrong. If we do it with Allah in mind, it's correct, inshallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this. And we know that Hawa alayha salatu was salam was created from the rib of Adam. And I did make mention and I repeat and I stress, that is not an insult to women. It, not at all. If that was an insult to women, it is a bigger insult. It would have been a bigger insult for the fact that man was created from dust. If you were to ask me what is better, a rib or dust, we would probably say a rib. Because you can't eat dust, mashallah. So my beloved brothers and sisters, let's understand this. And let us understand and realize no need to be apologetic. No need to say that we have been de degraded by the Prophet wasallam or by Allah. No ways. No, it is an honor. And that honor shall remain intact up to the day of Qiyamah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks also about Iblis. And we made mention of the point where Iblis was instructed with the angels to prostrate to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. And you recall what he says? He says, no, I won't. Not me. I'm better than him. 
So whose sin was it? It was the first sin being committed against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That sin was committed by shaitan. So he became known as the accursed and the one who was thrown out by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to what Allah says. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ أَبَى When we instructed the angels to prostrate to Adam, they all did. Besides, when we, when we instructed the angels to prostrate to Adam, they all did. Besides Iblis, he refused. Abba. That means he refused flat. فَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمُ إِنَّ هَذَا عَدُوٌ لَكَ وَلِزَوْجِكَ فَلَا يُخْرِجَنَّكُمَا مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ فَتَشْقَى So we said, O oh Adam, look at this enemy of yours. He is an enemy of yours. You better know from now that he is an enemy of yours. Make sure that he doesn't work his plan against you to remove you from this paradise and the goodness you are in. Now just bear this in mind because we mentioned it yesterday. Today I want to derive a different lesson from the same verse. So now Iblis, what did he do? He looks at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's very angry because Allah kicked him out of paradise. Allah kicked him out of paradise as a result. So he was no longer there. But now what happened is, he says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Oh Allah, because of what you've done now, I'm going to show you that this mankind, I'm going to lead him astray. And I'm going to come to him from all sides, from the left, from the right, from the front, from the back, from the bottom. But he did not make mention of the top. He didn't make mention of the top. Why? Allahu Akbar. Iblis, he wants, to, he will never ever come whilst we know he is coming. If we had to know he is coming, we would run away. If you know a thief is coming, you would go. But if you don't know the thief is coming, he's got to come quietly. When you're looking that way, he comes from this side. When you're looking this way, he comes from that side. When you're looking there, he comes from there and so on. And he comes in a disguise. And at the top, you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection always. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us protection at all times. And if we are to raise our hands to the owner of entire universe to protect us from the devil, then he will never ever be able to harm us. He will not. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this Iblis, he started blaming Adam alayhi salam. He started blaming Adam to say, because of you, I've been removed. Now think for a moment, was that the reason why he was removed? Was he removed because of Adam? No, it was his sin that made him cursed. Now let's draw a lesson for our lives here. When we have a problem in our lives, when we have difficulty, we blame others sometimes when we are the root cause. When we have done something wrong and sometimes we have a problem, whether it's at work, whether it is internationally, the wars that are going on, whether it is nationally, whether it is at the, in the home or at work, wherever it is, we do not address the root cause. So we never ever solve the problem. Look at Iblis. He did not want to tackle the root cause. What kicked him out of Jannah was not Adam. It was his sin, his own sin. So instead of saying, Ya Allah, I'm sorry, I sinned. And I was wrong and now you've kicked me out because I was wrong. So I blame myself. He decided to ignore the root cause and to go to blame Adam who was innocent of that. What was Adam alayhi salam's crime? Nothing. Today, if we look at the issue of terrorism across the globe, everybody says the Muslims are terrorists. These people are this. Nobody went to look at the root cause. How did it start? Where did it go? What oppression began? What resulted? In this result that we are seeing today, what is it? Let us address the root cause. Nobody wants to look at that. Everybody wants to say these people are this and these people are that. That having been said, Islam does not preach terrorism at all. Not at all. And I think that is quite clear to all of us. We promote harmony. We promote peace. We promote dignity. We promote respect. We promote security. We promote peace in every single way. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us peace across the globe. But when you get a criminal coming to create havoc and then they blame you, it only reminds you of Iblis, the devil who did refuse to prostrate and then he started blaming Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. 
So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a deep understanding and to make us look at the root causes of the problem we have, whether it's in our homes, whether it's in our businesses or social level, whatever other level, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solve our problems for us. Then you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raising the point that Iblis went to Adam alayhi salam and he says, هَلْ أَدُلُّكَ عَلَى شَجَرَةِ الْخُلْدِ وَمُلْكِ اللَّهِ يَبْلَى I want to show you this tree here. There are two things you'll achieve from it. One is you will have life forever, which means health and life. You're going to live forever. And two is you'll have lots of ownership. You'll own a lot. So Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, one might ask, how did Iblis get this message to him when Iblis was already kicked out of Jannah? It's a very, very interesting question. He was kicked out of Jannah. How did he communicate? So now we go back to another verse of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He and his own army, they see you from a position that you do not see them. They have this sort of remote control, what we know today as Bluetooth effect, Wi-Fi, they call it wireless. Allahu Akbar. So the, the same way we have this wireless and Bluetooth, it's easily understood. Your connection is not here, but you're connected. Where is it? It's in the air. How did it get here? Well, through remote control. There's something between here and there that I don't understand. You don't understand. Maybe a few, you know, fundis understand that. Only Allah knows. So Iblis knew how he got the message. From outside Jannah, he got the message into Jannah. How he did that? He knows. Allah warned us and Allah said, watch out, be careful. Didn't we say moments ago, he won't come to you direct and show you, I'm Iblis and I want to do this to you. He won't come that way. Secondly, it is reported that there was a serpent, a serpent from the army of Iblis that was in there and he came hiding. He was hiding in the throat or in the neck or inside the serpent and he came and then he spoke. Now, one of these two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best exactly which one it is. But what we do know as a conclusion is that he came in secret and he came without coming out full force to Adam alayhi salam. Apparently, he didn't appear. He just came in a way that he was not seen properly in disguise and so on. So he told Adam alayhi salam, these two things you will achieve. What happens to us when we are sick? We first go to the doctor, mashallah. The doctor, mashallah, we make dua to Allah and we say, Ya Allah, cure me. Then we go to the doctor and then we get our medication and we start having it. A month passes, we're not getting better. Two months pass, we're not getting better. Now what happens? The same shaitan comes back and he says, Hal adunluka ala shajaratil khuldi. He's telling you the same thing. Can I show you a different way? I want to show you there's another way you can get your health back. Let's go to the witch doctor. Let's go to the Nanga. Let's go to the fortune teller. Let's go to some one who calls himself a big Maulana who can tell you exactly who did magic on you. Finished. What happened? We fall into the same trap. For what? For health and life. Allahu Akbar. Look at the exact trap that is used by the same Iblis against us who are the Khulafa of Adam alayhi salam. We came after him and he's using the same trap. The, the moral of what is being said is Whenever we are sick, we pray to Allah. Very strong prayers. We can ask others to pray for us. There's no problem. We can visit the doctor. We can get medication. But we will not do anything that displeases Allah in order to achieve good health. Because come what may, we have to die whether today or tomorrow. And we are failing our test if we've done something that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anything that is disallowed, we are far away from that. And we need to be far away from that. That is what we learn. Another point that is learned. Sometimes our business is failing. We have a loss. Then it burns down. Then we happen to grow it up again. And then a robber comes. And then we happen to do something and the tax man comes. And we just failing one after the other. What do we say? We are not satisfied. We will go from one man to another. I think I've, I'm suffering bad luck here. So what should you do? He tells you, you, you need to take three bones and you need to put them in a certain Mercedes Benz sign. And then you need to take three lemons and put one in each compartment of that Mercedes Benz sign. And the, 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 the lemon needs to not weigh more than 80 
grams and then you need to squeeze each lemon with five drops coming out of the lemon and then you need to take that juice together and take a little bit of saffron. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> By hearing this already, we need to know that that is Iblis. What is it? Let me tell you when you're sick and someone says, cut five lemons, go and get 10 roses. What is happening? Let me explain. It's very important for us to explain. Iblis is laughing at us and laughing at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all he's doing. He says, look, didn't I warn you that I'm going to lead these people to worship me when you tell them pray when you are sick and go and seek proper medication when you are sick and do that that you are allowed to do when you are sick. You watch. They're not going to listen to you. I'll tell them cut 80 lemons. They'll go and cut them. I'll tell them go. Astaghfirullah. I heard one man tell a certain woman that someone has done magic on you and it is someone from your own family. So it broke the whole family to pieces. How did they know? Did Jibreel come to them? If Jibreel didn't come to them, then Iblis came to them. Allahu Akbar. And when Iblis comes, he pretends he's a Muslim. He tells you, I'm a jinn. I'm a clean jinn. I'm a Muslim. I'm a Sahabi. I know the Prophet. He definitely knows everything. As we said here, let's learn the lesson from this. When Iblis comes, he comes in disguise. So those who think they control a jinn, if that jinn tells you it's a Muslim, it's not a Muslim. Because in the Sharia of the jinn, they are not allowed to come close to you as mankind. Ya ma'shar al jinni qad istakthartum min al ins. Allah says, Oh jinn kind, you've made enough fools out of these mankind. Enough of them. And in Surah Al Jinn, go and read it. Allah says, وَأَنَّهُ كَانَ رِجَالٌ مِّنَ الْإِنسِ يَعُوذُونَ بِرِجَالٍ مِّنَ الْجِنِّ فَزَادُوهُمْ رَهَقًا There are so many men from mankind who seek protection and goodness and cure from jinn kind but it only increases them in becoming more and more astray and in greater misfortune and in more difficulty. That's what Surah Al Jinn tells us. So are we allowed to seek the assistance of jinn? The answer is no. And this lesson is for those who claim to be owning jinn and to be having jinn. Believe me, if Iblis could lie to Adam alayhi salam, for him to lie to us is far more easy. Because Adam alayhi salam knew him. He saw him. He recognized him. He knew everything. And still he was gone. With us, we haven't even seen him. So let us not be fooled. There is no quick fix. Like when a person doesn't have wealth. He can either work very, very hard and have a salary. Every day he's earning a little bit and slowly but surely he becomes rich. That is the difficult way, but it is the permissible way and you are passing your test. Or he can choose to go and steal at night and go and rob and go and take this and that and go and engage in armed robbery. He, he will have a lot of wealth, but his life will be misery. He will live in constant fear of being caught and so on. What's the point? But he became rich and he stole from so many people. And then suddenly when that pyramid scheme crashes, everything comes to a halt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding and goodness. The same way with health. When we are sick, you pray and you continue and you try the permissible means and you try from the Quran and the correct sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And thereafter the cure will come to you slowly but surely. But if you want a quick fix, you can go to the, the witch doctors and the others who will fix you overnight. But what did they do? They used Iblis who's laughing at you, laughing at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and saying, Ya Allah, look, I made fools of all these people. So we need to know, we need to understand. There is great detail. I don't have the time to go into exactly how it works, but it's quite simple. The spirits that we have with us, they are called spirits by the local African traditionalists, but we call them the Qurana, a Karin. Every person has an angel. And they have a devil, a jinn. The angel is ordering you to do good. The Qareen is ordering you to do bad. And you are the soul who, who allows one of the two to win. If you allow the good force to win, you become a good person. You allow the bad force to win, you become a bad person. When a person dies, his soul goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never to return. And his body decomposes into the earth unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills such as the bodies of the prophets Allah says in Allah harrama ala al ardi an ta'kula ajsad al anbiya that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited the earth from eating the bodies of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so with those exceptions the rest of us the body actually will decompose back into the earth and what happens to the devil what happens to the angel it gets given a different task by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's gone and that devil, 
What happens to it? It roams around. Where? A lot of them roam in the graveyard. A lot of them come back pretending to us that the souls have come back. So some people believe, hey, the soul came back. And you know, on this day, the souls come back. No soul comes back. The soul goes to Barzakh. The soul goes to a different place altogether. It is this spirit, or should I say this Karin, that comes back. It tackles, it plays games, it does this. It knows history. It knows you better than yourself because it was with you since the time you were born. So it knows exactly what happened. Now what does it do? It starts playing a game. People start beckoning the spirits. In order to beckon the spirits, you need to do something silly. Very silly. You need to cut 80 lemons or you need to do something. Sometimes people instruct you to murder. Sometimes they ask you to bring a tongue of a human being. Sometimes they ask you to cut a dove. Sometimes they ask you to do any form of silly items which do not make sense at all. Then you, you get the strength and you start. You can talk to your great grandfather and he'll talk to you in the voice you remember. Allahu Akbar. But that is all a joke and it is all unacceptable. It is possible. It can be done in the same way a robbery can happen. It is possible to engage in robbery, but the sin of it, it is sinful and it is not permissible. The same applies. This type of behavior is possible, but it is disallowed. And this is what we learn from Iblis. Iblis from the beginning, he promised, I'm going to come to them. How? Remote control. I'm going to come to them in a way that I will disguise myself. Even the good from amongst them will not know the difference. So Allah says, my worshippers who are going to worship me, Allah says, over them you will have no power, no authority. May Allah make us from the true worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the issue of Adam alayhi salatu was salam's sin. Allah says, فَنَسِيَ وَلَمْ نَجِدِ لَهُ عَزْمًا Adam alayhi salam forgot. We found that he had no firm intention of sinning. He did not have a firm intention of sinning. He was not resolute in sinning as we mentioned yesterday. So people begin to ask. Remember we're drawing lessons. People ask, Sheikh, tell us, why did Adam alayhi salam commit the sin? Why? What is it? Why did he commit the sin? Come on. Do you know what's the answer to that? Well, look, he was not resolute in committing that. He made a mistake. What about you? Why are you committing sin? Allahu Akbar. That's a better question. So look at how shaitan comes to us and makes us engrossed in why someone else sinned. And in the process we're sinning. He was not resolute in his sin. We plan the sin. We calculate the sin. We are intentionally committing the sin. We engage in the sin and we're happy about it after that. And we plan it again and we want to commit it again. And then we're saying, but why did Adam sin? Astaghfirullah. Look again how shaitan's plot comes back to us. So it's important. Look at yourself. Tuba liman shagalahu aibuhu an ayubin nas. That's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Give good news of paradise to the one whose own weaknesses keeps him or her occupied from looking at the weaknesses of others. We want to look at that man, this one, that one. You know, one day there's a, there was a question that someone asked me and says, what is the ruling of an imam who is the imam of the masjid who enters the masjid with the left foot? So I asked one of the mashayikh that, look, what is it? He says, right back to them to say, keep that imam. He's a very good imam and he must be given an increase in his salary and so on. And I looked and I said, but why? He says, you know what? You don't have much experience. I will tell you. These people must have been looking for something wrong with that Imam to kick him out. They found absolutely nothing. The only thing was he entered the masjid with the left foot. So they said, what's the ruling of an Imam with the left foot? And they wanted you to say, kick him out, but instead give them the opposite. Allahu Akbar. If that was the only thing they could find, he must be a top Imam. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us recognition and understanding. And may He give us the ability to look into what people are saying. Sometimes we are interested in the sins of others, not realizing they are heavenly people. And we are people who are far back and we are sinful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of something also very important that occurred. And we did not make mention of this yet. There was a time when Adam alayhi salam was created, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his back removed all his progeny up to the day of Qiyamah, including every single one of us and showed it to Adam. He says, Ya Adam, this is going to be your progeny. You will be succeeding one after the other. He was shocked. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
asked everybody this question. There was a question. This question is made mention of in the Quran. Listen to the verse. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ شَهِدِنَا أَنْ تَقُولُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّا كُنَّا عَنْ هَذَا غَافِلِينَ أو تقول إنما أشرك آباؤنا من قبل وكنا ذرية من بعدهم أفتهلكنا بما فعل المبطلون. الله says and remember when Allah took from the children of Adam from the back Allah took out all the children of Adam and brought them forth and asked them a question. Am I not the one who created you? And they all answered, Yes, indeed, it is you. Alas to be Rabbikum, am I not your Rabb? And they said, Bala, yes, indeed, you are. So Allah says, Do not come on the day of Qiyamah and say, We have forgotten about our covenant that we took with you and this question. Tell me, how many of us remember this? Not one. Not one. So Allah says, no problem. We will keep on sending you reminders of this. So that is why we have the Quran. And that is why in the Quran we have this verse. And that is why we believe that that happened. And the very next verse, Allah says, and I don't want any one of you to come and say, our forefathers were associating partners with you, O Allah, and we had no sin. We only followed them. Allah says, there is no excuse. Each one of you is responsible for your own deeds. And you have all taken this covenant with me. You need to question what your forefathers have done. If they have done what was right, Alhamdulillah. If they have done what was wrong, you need to delete it. You need to stop it. You need to change it. You need to do something about it. Because remember, when you go to Allah, you will be asked a question individually. مَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا سَيُكَلِّمُهُ رَبُّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهُ تُرْجُمَانِ None of you are such except that Allah will speak to every single one of you directly without a translator between the two of you. Nothing. And He will ask you what you did. And He will want the answer. So the hisab is not going to be taken by angels. It will be taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prepare a response for him. And that response always be on the safe side. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. So when that happened, Adam alayhi salatu was salam, he looked at these faces and they were lit. And he seen one shiny face. And he says, who is this? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that is a man from one of the later nations towards the end of time he will come up his name is Dawood David may peace be upon him so Adam alayhi salam out of curiosity is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya Allah what life did you give him for me you told me you're going to give me a thousand years he was told already so what life did you give him so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we gave him 60 years he says what 60 years that's very little now look at the love between the two one is the first human being and this is part of his progeny and this is why parents can sometimes sacrifice their lives in order to make the lives of their children and this is why whenever you ask a man why are you earning so much he says no i'm just preparing everything for my children all this i'm doing is for my children allahu akbar that's a common answer so adam alayhi salatu wasalam asks he says can you not increase him 40 years so allah says we can take it from your life and give him so from a thousand, we can cut down 40 and give him so he'll become a hundred. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got confirmation from Adam. He says, okay, you give him 40 years from mine. Amazing. He, Dawood alayhi salam lived for 100 years. Subhanallah. And Adam alayhi salam, I'm just fast forwarding the day that he, 960 years were finishing and the angels of death came. We'll get to that story inshallah. He says, hang on, there's still another 40 years. There's still another 40 years. And he, they said, no, don't you remember that you gave this 40 years to Dawood? He says, no, I don't remember. Allahu Akbar. He forgot, so man forgets. That's a hadith. The Prophet ﷺ says this in an authentic hadith. That he forgot, so man forgets. And according to some versions of the meaning of the term insan. Some versions of the Arabic language say 
that al insan summiya insan and li annahu yansa. That man was called insan because it is from nisyan, which means to forget. Man is forgetful. Adam alayhi salam forgot. He forgot two things. What else did he forget? He forgot right at the beginning when Allah told him, don't eat from this tree. Remember yesterday we said he forgot. Today we repeated the same verse. azman. He forgot and we didn't find him resolute in committing sin, but rather it was out of forgetfulness. So he forgot. Why? Because Iblis, the way he says things, sometimes you forget. He comes to you first time directly to say, look, Allah prohibited this, but this is why he prohibited it. You say, no, that doesn't work with me. So he comes again in another way and he comes in a third way until he succeeds. And whoever wins over him gets paradise. This is why in one narration, when Adam alayhi salam was sent to the earth, he makes a dua to Allah. He talks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Allah, didn't you create me with your own hands? He says, yes. Ya Allah, didn't you honor me as the first? He says, yes. Ya Allah, didn't you instruct the angels to prostrate to me? He says, yes. Ya Allah, didn't this Iblis not prostrate to me? He says, yes. Ya Allah, didn't you decree that I was going to do this? He says, yes. So Ya Allah, if I pray to you, and I obey your commands. Will you grant me Jannah? Allah says, yes, I will. Subhanallah. So this is for us. If we pray to Allah and we seek forgiveness, where are we going? Back to Jannah. Allahu Akbar. This is the message. This is why we are here. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. These are some powerful, powerful lessons that we learn from this story of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Then we have a very interesting point again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in many places in the Quran, that we instructed Adam and Eve, meaning Hawa, may peace be upon them. We told them, go to the earth. In fact, we addressed Adam and Iblis as well. We said, now go, go to the earth. So Iblis was allowed entry onto the earth. At one stage, he was prohibited from heaven. And thereafter, he was allowed entry onto the earth. And he was told, go there, go and dwell there. So he came down, Adam alayhi salam came down. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Adam alayhi salam, I will continue sending you guidance and your progeny and offspring guidance. Whoever follows the guidance, they won't go astray and they won't be unfortunate. Subhanallah. So up to today, Whoever is going to follow my guidance, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send you guidance. Whoever follows the guidance, they will not be led astray, nor will they be unfortunate. So now what happens with us? We need to know Allah sends guidance. Allah sent the Quran. This is why the Quran is there. The Quran is powerful. It is the guidance for us as Allah promised. And he sent this book and he sent so many books before the Quran. If we are to follow the Quran, we will never ever be misguided, nor will we be unfortunate. And this is why those who lack contentment, it's because they have drifted far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the time to come back to Allah. It is the time to come back. Everyone is searching and hunting for contentment. You have people who are atheistic, people who are agnostic, people who have different beliefs, people who think that this is the life and that's it. We got to make the most of it, but they're not happy. There is something missing because they don't have belief. They think we are just going to die and we're going to rot and that's it. Allah says, no, there is a beginning. You need belief. And that is what will make you a person who's enjoying contentment. Man is created such that without spirituality, he cannot enjoy this life of his. So we need the spirituality and we need this belief. It's important for us to know this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us. And this is why Adam alayhi salatu was salam was sent to the earth and he was given this as a message. And on top of that, he was told, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكًا وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى Allah says, whoever turns away from my reminders that I keep sending them, they will be having a life which is very narrow, very full of difficulty, lack of contentment, dunkan, that which is it does not have any form of joy in it. It is completely shallow and narrow, full of difficulty and problem, lack of contentment and so on. And when we resurrect him on the day of Qiyamah, he will be blind. 
So he will say, Oh Allah, how did you resurrect me blind when I could see whilst I was alive on the earth? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, we will tell him, didn't we send you reminders and you turned a blind eye against those reminders? So today we've resurrected you blind. You turned away from us. So today you will be forgotten as well. May Allah not make us from amongst those. Now if we look at Adam alayhi salam, he came down onto the earth. He was sent to the earth. There's a question. Where did he land? He, was, he wasn't just thrown so that suddenly he landed, meaning he dropped. But Allah placed him on the earth. This we find in the narration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa where he says that Adam alayhi salam nazala fil hind. He came down in what is known as the indo pak subcontinent. Precisely Sri Lanka. There is a mount there known as Adam's Peak. If you go there, you will find it green and beautiful as though it is not from this earth. But it is. I'm not trying to imply anything. But I'm just saying it is so beautiful maybe because the Sri Lankans have kept it that way. But it's a beautiful place. It is, it is said that there is a possibility that that is the place. We don't know for certain that that spot is the place, but roughly there. What about Hawa? Where did she come down? In Jidda. Where is Jidda? Jidda is in the Arabian Peninsula, in what we know today as Saudi Arabia. And what is the meaning of Jidda or Jadda or Judda? It means the grandmother. It is named after her. Subhanallah. Now what happened? They started looking for each other. I remember, meaning I can imagine, I'm just saying it for myself. I can imagine them thinking, I remember there was someone, you know, we had Hawa here, where is she? Let's start looking. And he started looking, subhanallah. If you picture it, you can imagine. And Adam alayhi salam began to walk. And he started walking towards where the sun was setting. He started walking towards the west. And Eve, Hawa alayhi salatu was salam, as a female, she didn't walk too much. But she also tried to look for Adam alayhi salam. No, that does not mean that women are not interested. No, not at all, not at all. And according to what some of the historians have to say, they met in Arafah. And this is why where the white pillar is, the historians have made mention of, I haven't found it in a correct narration, authentic narration, but they say that that where Arafah is, where we actually gather, that is where the two met. Wallahu a'lam, Allah knows best. And this shows us, subhanallah, that man, you know, when we are separated from our spouses, it should hurt us. It should make us want to get back. We should do anything to solve the matter. This is what it is. I think that is a lesson that is drawn here. If we want to learn something from Adam alayhi salam, he didn't just wait for another woman to come along. No, he didn't. He knew that I have a wife. Let me make an effort. And do you know he walked half the globe, imagine. And he got to her. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Imagine what must have been. I don't know. It's not made mention of in narrations. But it, there's no harm in thinking. What must have been the emotions when the two saw each other. They must have thought, I don't know, but I'm just imagining. Subhanallah. Imagine after what effort. How many of us are prepared to solve our marital problems by making even one millionth of that effort. It's a lesson. Today, a small thing, we flick the marriage off. Small thing, flicked off. Go for someone else. Small thing, it didn't work. Why? For what? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. May He grant us Jannah. We have a lot more to say. Inshallah, we leave it for tomorrow until we meet.